So, having understood elementary matrices, let us see and we have also seen that they are invertible. So, some results there, what we had seen was that if, so let me write this as a theorem that let, so I will just write E for either say E k of C or E i j of C or E i j. If E is an elementary matrix, matrix, then E inverse is also an elementary matrix, elementary matrix. Further, the inverse is also of the same type. So, what do I mean by this of the same type? So, what we are saying is that the inverse of E k of C, if I apply the inverse map, it is E k of 1 upon C. If I have the matrix which is E i j of C, here I assuming that C is not 0, that is very, very important. Then I want to apply the inverse, then it is nothing but E i j of minus C and the inverse of E i j is E i j itself. So, multiplying by C gives us multiplying by 1 upon C, replacing the ith row by ith row plus C times the jth row gives the inverse of that as ith row being replaced by ith row minus C times the jth row and interchange of ith and jth is again interchange of ith and jth, fine. So, some definition now, definition, two matrices A m cross n and b m cross n are said to be row equivalent if one can be obtained from the other by a sequence, sequence of elementary operations. So, elementary row operation, let me be clear about it, row operations and what we are saying is by, by a sequence of, of elementary matrices, matrices being multiplied, multiplied on the left. So, what we are saying is I can get A as equal to some elementary matrices E 1, E 2, E k times B, is that ok? Or which is same thing as saying that I can also write B in terms of some elementary matrices F 1, F 2, F t times B, sorry F t times A is that ok. So, these are elementary matrices and these also were elementary matrices fine and what we know is that they are inverse, they are invertible. So, if you want to see you can relate these two also, you can see here that I can multiply by E 1 inverse here. So, for example, so I will get E 1 inverse A as E 2, E 3, E k times B, again I can multiply by E 2 inverse. So, I will get E 2 inverse E 1 inverse A will be equal to E 3 till E k of B and therefore, if you want to relate the two, you can see here that look at here f of t will be equal to E 1 of E 1 of inverse. So, you can see that t has to be equal to k all right. So, f k will be equal to E 1 inverse and so on. So, I would like you to try that out yourself fine and get a better understanding of things. Now, what we would like to understand it what are called row reduced Eklund form. So, I want to understand now. So, we had understood what is called R E F earlier. What was the row Eklund form? 
Now, we would like to understand what is called RREF. So, the full form of this is rho reduced equivalent form. So, let us recall what was the rho equivalent form. So, a matrix was in R E F if 1 all the 0 rows all the 0 rows were at the bottom all right to the pivot of the i plus 1 th row if it exists appears on the right of the pivot of the i th row fine and what were the pivot pivot was first non zero row non zero entry in a non zero row fine that was very very important what was the pivot pivot was the first non zero entry in a non zero row all right and the third thing about the ref the row reduced equivalent form was the ref was that look at the pivots the entry below the pivot or entry below the pivot in any pivotal column or bracket may column containing a pivot column containing a pivot all right the entry below the pivot in any pivotal column was 0. This was what it was. So, this part that second part gave us what are called the ladder like or the staircase type and it said that 0 is at the bottom and there are pivots and below the pivots everything is 0. So, this was this. Now, oh, so here also I wrote wrong R R E F it should have been here. Now, we would like to look at what is R R E F. So, the only difference in R R E F and this is that that this matrix A is said to be in R R E F if A is in R E F and there are extra condition here. So, I can write it 4 here is pivot is 1. So, there we allowed the pivots to be any number, we did not have to divide by any number or multiply by any number to get the pivots at 1. Now, we are saying that each pivot has to be 1. So, this is one extra thing that we are saying and the fifth part we are saying is look at the third in the previous case, the third says that every entry below the pivot has to be 0 all right, every entry below the pivot. Now, we want that every entry other than the pivot, so every entry except the pivot pivot in any pivotal column in any pivotal column column has to be 0. So, this is a very very important restriction that we have that for R R E F we need that the pivots have to be 1 and this has to be there that every other entry in that column has to be 0. So, let us look at some examples to have a better clarity of this example. So, let us look at examples all right example 1. So, 0 1 0 minus 2 0 0 1 1. So, if I look at this matrix the first non 0 entry in the first row is this 
the first non zero entry is uh, this here so these are the two which are the pivotal columns all right look at every other entry in this which is zero here all right so this is in rrdf another example Suppose I have this, all right. So here, if I look at this is the pivot, this is a pivot, this is a pivot, and I have got corresponding things here. Fine. So this is so pivotal columns are these are the three pivotal columns. Now what are not in pivots? So which are not not in RREF? So some examples of that. So, you can have here 0, 3, 0, minus 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, this is not in RRDA because this part is fine. Here there is a problem, the pivot should have been 1. Pivot should be 1. All right. It may happen that I have this matrix here, which is 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0. All right. Now, again if I look at this is a pivot, this is a pivot. Pivots are nice, they are 1, but look at this column. This column we need every other entry other than pivot except other, other than pivot, pivot to be 0. All right, which is not the case here. All right, so this is column is one one zero. All right, this column looks like this, which is not allowed. Fine. Now, what I would like you to understand here is that, which is going to be very very useful for us, that here there are two pivots. So there are two pivots here. I would like you to see that there is I two sitting here. So there are two pivots. So there is a I two which is sitting here. Here in this example, there were three pivots, and therefore I have got one zero zero. Sorry, there was a mistake here. It should have been zero here because. All right, so this has, should have been a zero here. Fine. Since there are three pivots, it is in RREF, so we need that. So look at the second one now. It is zero one zero, and this is zero zero one. Fine. So, there is a I 3 sitting inside this. So, what we are trying to say is that if, so what I am saying is that if A is in RREF with R pivots, then I R is sitting inside as a sub matrix. This is very important. All right. So, just construct your things, you can see that. For example, here even though there are two pivots, the corresponding part that I have is 3 0 0 1, which is not I 2. Fine. Similarly, here if I look at, I have two pivots, but my matrix looks like this, which is not I 2. All right. But if I have got R pivots, and my matrix is in RREF, then I will always have, all right, always have IR coming into play. This is very, very important thing. Now, we will try to understand in the next class that how to get this matrix RREF and what is the importance of this RREF. Thank you.